400 million miles from Earth. Flying a commercial airliner here would take nearly a century. What a weird looking place. And yet, strangely familiar. A bit like the Arctic, with all that ice, all those ridges and cracks. It's Jupiter's moon, Europa. And maybe like the Arctic, this ice is floating on water, liquid water. But we're half a billion miles from the sun. Surely Europa is frozen solid. Unless Jupiter's gravity is creating friction deep inside, heating the ice into water, allowing life to develop in the waters beneath its frozen crust. We might be feet away from aliens, from a whole ecosystem of microbes, crustaceans, maybe even squid. The only thing between us and the possibility of alien life, this layer of ice, but until we send a spacecraft to drill here, Europa's secrets will remain beyond reach. It's captivated our imaginations, haunted our dreams. And here it is, spinning before our eyes. Saturn, named for the Roman god who reigned over a golden age of peace and harmony. This planet's a giant ball of gas, so light it would float on water. Its spectacular rings would stretch almost from Earth to the moon. There's the Cassini orbiter. It's picking up ghostly radio emissions, probably generated by auroras around Saturn's poles. This is the real music of the spheres. Cassini's telling us where these rings came from. They're the remnants of a moon shattered by Saturn's gravitational pull. Incomparable beauty from total destruction. Billions of shards of ice, some as small as ice cubes, others the size of houses. They collide, break apart, reassemble. It's like a snapshot of our early solar system. As dust and gas orbited the newly born sun, and gravity worked its magic, pulling the lumps together, until from space trash like this, our home emerged. We could stay here forever. But there's so much further to go, so much more to see like this moon wrapped in thick clouds. Titan. There's an atmosphere down here. There's wind, rain, even seasons. Rivers, lakes, and oceans. It looks so familiar, so similar to Earth.
But that's not water. It's liquid natural gas. Hundreds of times more natural gas than all the Earth's oil and gas reserves. Maybe one day we'll use this energy to fuel a colony. Assuming there isn't life here already. The Huygens space probe is here to find out. It's telling us there's organic material in the soil, but it's so cold, minus 300 degrees. There's no way life could develop. Unless Titan warms up. The sun is supposed to get hotter. When it does, maybe life will spring up here, just like it did on Earth. And as the Earth gets too hot for us, maybe we'll move to Titan. One day we might call this distant land home. Home. We're at least 700 million miles away now. After this, we lose visual contact with Earth. We're standing on a cliff, looking out over a great chasm that stretches to the beginning of time. Do we have the courage to jump? We're in the solar system's outer reaches, unseen from Earth, unknown for most of history. It's like diving into the depths of the ocean. Those rings make it look like Uranus has been tilted off its axis, toppled over by a stray planet. It's eerie out here. Already beginning to feel small, lonely. Maybe this is how we'll feel at the edge of the universe. But we've barely left the shore. If the solar system was one mile wide, so far we've traveled about three inches. Out of the deep, another strange beast, the god of the sea, Neptune. This world is covered in methane gas. And a storm as big as Earth, whipped up by savage 1,000 mile an hour winds. Back home, it's the sun that drives the wind. But Neptune's far away. Something else must be creating these ferocious winds. But what? We know very little about our own solar system. After all those balls of gas, a solid moon. Triton. Solid, but not stable. Look at those geysers, cosmic smokestacks, pumping out strange soot. And this moon is revolving around Neptune in the opposite direction of the planet's spin. A cosmic battle of wills that this angry moon is destined to lose. Neptune's massive gravity is pulling on Triton, slowing it down, reeling it in. One day, it will be ripped apart by Neptune. And that's it.
No more moons, no more planets in our solar system. It's getting colder. We're getting further from the sun, slipping from the grip of its gravitational tentacles. But this isn't a void. It's teeming with frozen rocks, like Pluto. Until recently, we thought Pluto was alone. Beyond it, nothing. We were wrong. More frozen worlds. Discoveries so new, nobody can agree what to call them. Plutinos, ice dwarfs, Cubiwanos. Our solar system is far more chaotic and strange than we had imagined. Now we're eight billion miles from home. The most distant thing ever seen that orbits the sun. Another small icy world, Sedna, discovered in 2003. Its orbit takes 10,000 years to complete. Hang on, there's something else out here. 10 billion miles from home, the space probe Voyager 1. This bundle of aluminum and antennae give us close-up views of the giant planets and discovered many of their strange moons. It's traveling 20 times faster than a bullet, sending messages home. That gold plaque, it's a kind of intergalactic message in a bottle. A greeting recorded in different languages. And a map showing how to find our home solar system. The great physicist Stephen Hawking thinks it was a mistake to roll out the welcome mat, after all. If you're in the jungle, is it wise to call out? These comets look like the ones we saw earlier. There's a theory that the raw materials for life began out here on a rock this until something dislodged it sending it hurtling towards the Earth. And seeing all this ice, maybe comets carried water to Earth too. The water in the oceans, in your body. All from this distant celestial ice machine. We're five million million, that's five trillion, miles from home. But this is still only a baby step. Ahead, trillions of miles, billions of stars. Time to stop looking back and start looking ahead. To step out into the big wide universe. interstellar space. Billions of stars like our own sun, many with planets, many of those with moons. It's hard to know which way to go. There are infinite possibilities. We're going to need a serious burst of acceleration 